Have you ever asked yourself that question? What is the future of Windows and Microsoft? In spite of the fact that it has the most respected research facility in Cambridge, where creative brains are working on something exciting, there is a feeling that Microsoft is waning. Although they have a lot of spare cash and dominant market status, their speed of innovation seems to be slowing down. Now, let's get to the heart of the matter and delve into the reasons why some think that Microsoft is on a slow downward trajectory. In 2010, the head of Windows, Steven Sanofsky, was taken aback when Steve Jobs introduced the iPad. For Microsoft, it would have been a tablet, but they thought it would run Mac OS along with a stylus and would be priced around $1,000. However, the iPad became another product, with Microsoft doubting the market size. Even though Windows brought in a considerable amount of money, Microsoft was not sure about the future. It was a dismal failure in the smartphone segment, lagging behind Apple, and it was a time of a shift towards web apps on different platforms. The claim from Apple that they invented the new form factor was a great concern for Microsoft. Sanofsky used the term BlackBerry moment as a metaphor to illustrate the fact that, unless Windows reinvented itself, it could potentially become extinct. During the whole period of the next decade, Microsoft put a lot of effort in revising Windows, but their attempts didn't have the desired result. Just the contrary. The very thing that made Windows so essential to Microsoft's greatness while facing these challenges in the ever-changing marketplace. Step 1. A novel tech of the type like the iPad pops up, and Microsoft believes it can be the next big thing in the market of computing devices. Step 2. Microsoft is apprehensive that Windows is falling behind, and so it has to redefine its operating system to be on par with the new technology. The iPad is a perfect example where they redesigned the whole interface system to look like a tablet, and they push users to full-screen applications. But then, step three. The transition isn't smooth. An obstacle that is significantly difficult is to turn a desk computer into a tablet one. Microsoft is in a hurry, and its partners are not so fast to catch up. Intel doesn't have a chip for tablets, and application developers may need some time to learn how to make their apps work with Windows Touch Interface. Everything goes downhill. The whole idea collapses. Meanwhile, step four. The major features of Windows 10 are the bane of regular Windows users who just need their PC to be a PC. The latest version of the Windows system replaces the previous version, and at the end, the removed version has to be uninstalled. Now, after finishing this four-step cycle, Microsoft spent a lot of time on something which not only was bad for the long-term future of Windows, but often made it even worse. Their tremendous workload is a great source of a legacy bloat, which accumulates as time passes. Continuing into the next decade, Microsoft repeated this cycle multiple times, exemplified by the following instances. Continuing into the next decade, Microsoft repeated this cycle multiple times, exemplified by the following instances. Step 1. VR gains momentum by companies like Oculus and HTC Vive, and Microsoft sees the value. Step 2. Microsoft is a strong promoter of mixed reality, which makes Windows 10 compatible with HoloLens, an AR headset with sophisticated technology. They embed a mixed reality platform into all Windows versions on PCs, which introduces features such as Paint 3D for creating and discovering 3D objects. The default app interface also gets a redesign in 3D, as it entails glass-like textures, 3D shadows, and a glowing cursor-like VR controllers. Step 3. Windows Mixed Reality is on a downward curve as they continue to fail to release their VR-capable headsets and HoloLens remains a thing of the past. But it is the majority of users globally that do not feel the need for Windows being a mixed reality operating system. Step 4. Microsoft takes several years to delete as much 3D and mixed reality content from Windows as possible, leaving behind things that they cannot eliminate as useless clutter. The cycle ends and starts again, which is the start of the new cycle. Step 1. The lightweight Chrome OS becomes popular among corporations and educational establishments because it is easy to handle and secure to deal with. Step 2. Microsoft moves on to unveil Windows 10 S, which is a modified version that only allows users to install Microsoft-approved apps. 
some Microsoft Surface devices ship with this version of the OS as the default. Step 3. The project is a failure, as it turns out that Windows 10 S cannot match Chrome OS's performance on the low-end hardware, and it cannot be supported with a full Windows base. On top of that, its Edge browser is not as advanced as Chrome. It is this situation that confuses the people who buy a Surface and find it difficult to install the usual apps that they use. Step 4. In the first year of its release, Microsoft discontinues Windows 10 S and subsequently undoes the changes, reverting it back to a switch that is available only to enterprise users and thus with minimal adoption. During the last decade, Microsoft tried to redesign Windows OS a number of times, but ending up with a tablet or mixed reality system was not that successful. It is worth noting that despite some of the changes, many people had Windows. And just like that, Windows 11 is here. And Microsoft is once again returning to the basics, improving the core PC experience. They spruced up the interface and also put functionality in applications such as File Explorer, Notepad, Snipping Tool, and Paint. It seems like Microsoft isn't just betting on Windows anymore. It is trying to prove that Windows 11 can get back the users now. From 2020, Apple has been using its ARM-based M-Series chips with a big lead in power efficiency and performance, primarily on thin and light laptops. It has led to the increasing popularity of Mac OS. To beat Apple's chips, Windows should have the same. Intel and AMD may jump in, but ARM for Windows is a revelation. It could lead to the second option. Qualcomm has just launched their Snapdragon X series chips, which were made by the same experts that also work on Apple's M chip series. These ARM-based CPUs boast a better performance and power efficiency that has passed benchmark tests over their competitors. The only way to confirm these claims is by doing the third-party test, but it looks like a good alternative. It is reported that Qualcomm's deal with Microsoft for ARM chips expires, and the rumors that NVIDIA and AMD may also release ARM-based Windows chips are circulating around the industry. MediaTek was reported to launch PC chips, and Samsung and Huawei might do the same. In the old days, Windows was only compatible with x86 chips that came from Intel and AMD because of the licensing constraints. With ARM chips, manufacturers get a chance to build them by themselves. Thus, they become competitors. Lastly, Microsoft needs to enhance the ability of the operating system and apps on Windows on ARM to run at a higher level. The software side has been among the weakest points, and there should be more efforts to make it more visually appealing. Lenovo's Snapdragon 8CX Gen 3 PC configuration, tested before Qualcomm's launch, will provide actual battery life as well as a fanless, thin, and light experience. Even though it is less powerful than a Mac, it still handles everything very well and even some AI generative features, like Photoshop, have been implemented. However, the Windows on ARM is still plagued by the app problem after running for over a half of the decade. Some apps may work smoothly when their native code is compiled for ARM platform, while others are more complicated, which is the biggest obstacle to the progress of this platform. The emulator apps are the ones that cannot run directly on a phone. These ones work but you should not expect them to have the same emotional connectedness as the native people. This technology can be okay for a desktop app like Signal or Audacity, but it may be too much for advanced apps such as Chrome. Type 4 includes offers that are highly advanced and need the devices to be configured in order to work effectively. These include video editing apps and extensive games. They are not supported on some devices as well. Yet, in order to make the Windows on ARM platform more attractive, Microsoft should deal with these issues and provide an incentive for the users to go back to Windows. This is what they do. They integrate AI features in the operating systems, apps, and services. Increasing AI functions in PC platforms is logical, especially for creative activities like writing, coding, and data processing. The success rate of AI for Windows remains a point of debate. However, AI looks more likely to succeed than the effort to make Windows a tablet OS. That's it for today's video. Make sure to like the video and share your thoughts in the comment section.